are these people? We got our first story. We're going to talk about yeah. propaganda. So, yeah, so these are notes from Caitlin uh, that I just happened to pull uh, this week, and I thought it was very fitting given what we've been experiencing in well, just anyway, but I think especially in terms of what we've been hearing and seeing recently and I, uh, regarding Israel. Um, but then, you know, just a lot of stuff that has just been coming out, you know, from, since from October 7th and since then uh, has just made, not our audience, because you guys are actually very smart and you guys are actually uh, do your research and learn stuff. Um, but there's just some people who are just very lazy in terms of the information that they get. And so Caitlin kind of talks about that, especially given what's happening in Israel and Palestine. So we got, we're going to we have a donation perfect. from oh. the Accord Lord who said Red Heart oh, oh. and gave us $10. Look at you. Thank you. What are you doing it? Although we didn't hear the... Yeah, I fixed it. Your Windows updates screwed okay. that up. Um, okay. As it tends to do. I gotta remember to do that every okay. time Windows decides to do it over. Um, so thank you to the Accord Lord for donating yeah. a little bit closer yeah, can, to Jesse's computer. I think I got... Uh, Who are these people? That's what you should have heard. That's what you should have heard. Yeah. Um, but anyway... Cool. Um, so yeah, that's what it, it's nice not to hear. Give our voices a break every once in a while. Um, so, so Caitlin has this article that her husband does. Her Tim husband Foley. reads Tim Foley reads all of her articles that are available on her blog as well as on YouTube. So, so let's hear him. Uh, read this. these notes Ooh. from Caitlin. It's actually amazing how stupid the propaganda is getting. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. <laughs> the correct thing to do when someone tries to tell you that opposing an act of genocide is discriminatory against Jews is to laugh uproariously and then ignore everything else they say for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Jewish Zionists are like, Excuse me, it's actually against my religion for you to oppose genocide. You need to stop religiously persecuting me with peace activism. So many Westerners say they support Israel and also support a two-state solution, which is a nonsensical Ooh. position when Israel is aggressively opposed to a two-state solution. If you actually support the creation of a Palestinian state, you are directly at odds with every meaningful power structure in Israel. It's like saying you support Biden but want him to lose the election. It's like saying you support unions, but also support aggressive union busting. It's an entirely self-contradictory position that can only be reconciled without cognitive dissonance if you don't really care about a two-state solution. U.S. intelligence estimates that Israel has only killed 30 to 35 percent of Hamas fighters in Gaza so far, and that Hamas has meanwhile been recruiting thousands of new fighters in the wake of Israel's onslaught. After more than seven months of unfathomable horror, Israel has come nowhere remotely close to accomplishing its stated goals in Gaza. Israel must therefore necessarily either A. Inflict much, much, much more horror upon Gaza for a very, very long time, or B. Revise its official goals. And then there's also option C, which is that Israel has been lying about its stated goals this entire time and is actually accomplishing exactly what it set out to accomplish. Donald Trump told the press that sentient Reaper drone Nikki Haley is going to be on our team because the two of them share a lot of the same ideas. This man is openly saying he's going to once again team up with warmongering swamp monsters for his next term, and is openly saying he's going to continue Biden's warmongering in Ukraine and Gaza. But I am with absolute certainty still going to get brainwashed Trump supporters telling me he's going to end the wars and fight the deep state. It's actually amazing how stupid the propaganda has gotten. Bombing kids in hospitals is self-defense. An extremely blatant ethnic cleansing campaign is actually a war. A few Western Zionist Jews saying they feel unsafe on campus is a more urgent concern than an active genocide. 
Sometimes it feels like they're experimenting on us just to see how dumb of a narrative they can get people to swallow. They're like, let's tell them Hamas just attacked Israelis completely unprovoked, like totally out of nowhere. Act like Israel was just sitting there minding its own business and had a bunch of terrorists attack them because they're evil and hate Jews. What? Come on, man, they'll never buy that. The entire Israel-Palestine conflict is public record. Oh, they'll buy it. Just slyly suggested in the news over and over again in a confident, authoritative tone and it'll go right in. Actually, a lot of the breathtakingly stupid things the Empire asks us to believe aren't even believed by the people who voice them. Who actually believed it was ridiculous to suggest that Israel might attack a Palestinian hospital and lie about it? Who actually believes there's a terrifying anti-Semitism epidemic in our society? I am convinced a lot of the people who claim to believe these things actually know better, but are pretending to believe fake nonsense in order to advance their political agendas. The Empire asks us to believe idiotic things all the time, year after year. But the narratives about what's happening in Gaza are at a whole other level. It's just a non-stop assault on people's sense of reality. Luckily, they appear to have ramped up the stupid faster than they could get away with this time. More and more people are waking up to their lies, and the eyes that are snapping open in 2024 are going to remain open to empire propaganda for the rest of their days. In the rest of our lives, <laughs> if I say it too accurately, I think this is. Um, what? So, any thoughts? I mean, this will probably be a very short segment, but. A couple of them. I was talking with the people and we were talking about how it's just we're, we're being lied to constantly at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's just that the propaganda is really, I think, the most debilitating factor here. And, you know, I mean, it's also, there's a genocide, so there's that. But, you know, normally it would be like they would just accept that and tell you that's what's happening and that, that you you still have no power, so nothing would change anyway. But well, here, here's the thing with this, and I heard Russell from Do Dissonance say this, um, yeah. like, probably today, actually. Uh, and I've kind of said this in a different way on the show before mm. people are denying that right now is a genocide because I think for many people, they are thinking, Oh, a genocide is constituent of like X number of people. So we've haven't made hit that number yet. Right. So, so like, as I said, you know, we talked about Rwanda genocide like a month ago now. Uh, and that was close to a million um, people who were slaughtered within 100 days. Uh, so, you know, so I think it's the idea of people in a very creepy way thinking, oh, we haven't reached that number yet. So, mm -hmm. so it's no way that could be a genocide. I mean, you're still trying to ethnically cleanse the region, even though the numbers to you may not indicate otherwise. So, and as we said, I can, we can make the argument right now, they've been hovering around 30, 40,000 people, lives, Palestinians lives are lost. Yeah. That's more than likely an undercount. There's probably way under uh, well, this That point. probably is way more than that. And not accounting system, for lives lost well, in Rafa. Every, well, every system regarding to the counts in Gaza have not been destroyed. So there's no possible way there's going to be an accurate count at this point. And that's on purpose. It's to kind of make the numbers seemingly lower than what they should be. So it's not as... It's not as crazy to people to think that, you know, that there's a potential genocide going on. But I think all the same, it's the idea of like the straight up denial that there is a genocide occurring um, is kind of maddening. Well, I've said this on the show many times, it's maddening to me. Uh, but I think, but as I said at the beginning of the segment, I think it just kind of shows almost like intellectual laziness in terms of, you know, given that people usually the argument is oh i want a two-state solution for palestinians but again bb has said many many times that he's not for a two-state solution so 
Uh, and that's what Biden has said, you know, that he's trying to push for a two state solution, which, again, if you've watched um, our segment with uh, what school is it? Morehouse. He mm-hmm. made that comment, and we know that's a bold faced lie because, uh, as we said, BB is against it. So, what, how are you going to put, push him to do a two state solution, Biden? Like, with unicorns and puppies? Like, so it's just, it, it just, it's kind of a way to kind of show people, I want to hear what I want to hear and move on with my day. Like, people really don't care like at least in mainstream well i don't want to say that i i feel that there are more people i think especially in the media space that do care but their wallets won't allow them to say the truth i think that's more the argument that i can make in terms to that um so it's just easy to kind of catch up with the line knowing you are paid to do so versus actually say the truth and then yeah not have a job yeah for sure I think it's also just the state of our media, too. You know, like, they just don't care if they're caught in thousands of lies. There's no repercussions for lying. You know, like, I mean, I don't know how many times we still have to hear (coughs) beheaded babies and, you know, uh, New York Times allegations that have been since denounced. You know, like, it's just kind of ridiculous that there's no journalistic integrity there. Not that it's surprising, but yeah. Great stuff from Caitlin, though, for sure. So, we we'll hear more from Caitlin later, but yep. in the meantime, um, if you want to help me get a new... <laughs> <laughs> I think I just need a new cable, dude. I've been needing to, like, I think I have one. I just got to replace it. Okay. I mean, well, if, if you want to help Leaf get multiple cables so he doesn't <laughs> yeah. cut out um, yeah. and, like, have a lot of dead space for, like, two, three two minutes, minutes on a stream, yeah, uh, you can go to this QR code or if you type in um, explanation point donate, it will give, a, give you the link where you're able to donate. Uh, so please absorb some co- Kofi as that's the only way that we're able to monetize anything that we do on this network now since YouTube hates us. Um, also, um, we're on that road to 2K. Uh, we're almost there. I think we are like 42 subs away from that right now. So is it possible? I think we'll probably hit that by the end of June, if not yeah. before. At this Hopefully. point, um, but but yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, and please share. We are heavily suppressed on YouTube, and uh, make sure you leave a comment. We definitely really appreciate your comments. Uh, sometimes we get stories in live your comments, mm-hmm. but we do appreciate the feedback. Um, we do read them uh, now that we're able to read them, so. We do appreciate that. Uh, and as I said, help us get to 2K. Hopefully we can get there uh, by the end of next month. And then yeah. we can move on to other things. Do the thing. Hit the button that looks like this down there. It, it's, it's right down there. The subscribe button. Go hit that. 